So we're all going stir crazy. And on top of the humans absolutely getting bored out of their minds and frustrated that we can't leave our houses, our dogs are also going stir crazy and losing their minds. So in this video, I'm going to break down the best ways that you can keep your dog mentally engaged and active during quarantine. All of the activities that I'm gonna give you today are free. You do not need to go out and buy anything. So if I have your interest, keep watching. What's up guys, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health and on this channel we break down scientific research in order to inform and educate us on how to train dogs. If you're new here, welcome. Consider hitting the subscribe button if you enjoy this content. I have had a lot of requests from my clients and from my followers asking, oh my gosh Jenna, what do I do to keep my dog engaged while I'm quarantined? The entire globe is in chaos right now as a result of the virus that shall not be named. And we, many of us are in quarantine, um, whether that is mandated or by self isolation, um, we can't leave our homes. Many of my clients have told me how much they're struggling. So it was important that I put out this video for you today. And I wanted to give you guys a list of activities that you can do. And I know that everybody has different rules of how they're quarantined um, and I really wanted to help the masses with this video so I have intentionally made all of the games things that you can play indoors if necessary but of course if you are able to take your dog out for a walk and let them have a sniffari uh, please do that all of these games you can also play in a big wide park as well so if you're able to take your dog outside of the house right Right now please do um, but I know that not all of us have the same rules or same guidelines and so I wanted to make this something that was applicable to everyone let's get started so I wanted to start off this list with nose work games I've got a couple for you coming up the base level of nose work would be something like find it in which you hide treats in different parts of the house and you let the dogs hunt for it now there's a couple of ways that you can do this the first being you can just hide their kibble and just feed them their this their dinner this way um, and put the kibble in different parts of the space that would be like the level one easy you can also do this playing hide and seek with your dog so that is that you put them in some sort of stay you go hide and then they come and find you this does require that the dog has a pretty solid stay so that might be a little bit more challenging if you have a new puppy but it's a wonderful way to get them to hunt you out and find you somewhere in the house remember you have the entire house to hide and use it to your advantage to motivate your dog a little bit more, I do recommend that you use higher value treats. If you don't know your dog's high, medium, and low value treats, I recommend you check out this video after this one, but it's going to help you distinguish what your high, medium, and low value treats are. And if you are looking to engage your dog in a much more challenging way, then something you might do is put the medium value treat or high value treat in a paper towel and then hide the paper towel so that they have to hunt that. Now, something that I would do want to warn you is that if you have a destructive type dog or if they are accustomed to stealing toilet paper then this might not be the way to do it for you um, this is just for certain dogs this is definitely not an every dog type thing but if your dog is the right fit and you do trust them with a little bit of paper then I recommend you make the paper towels pretty floofy you don't want them to be tight in a ball you want them to be pretty wide this helps them first of all open up the paper towel to get the treat but secondly um, it keeps them from being able to put the whole treat in their mouth and swallowing it which could be dangerous the other way to play find it is to put their treats or their kibble whatever you choose in household appliances now this could be something like a cupcake tin in which you put some socks or some toilet paper rolls or whatever on top of the treats now I do like to only put the treats in certain slots of the tins not the whole thing that makes sure that they are scoping out the ones with food first that would be the idea that they are only going after the slot that has 
treats in it. They're not actually going after the slots that have nothing in it. You can also put food underneath Tupperware or boxes. You would hide the Tupperware, hide the box somewhere in the house or in the backyard. And then once they find the box, they actually have to knock over the box in order to get to the pile of treats or even just the one treat if you think that's motivating enough. The other game that I like to play is with cups. So you could take three to five plastic cups, hide the treats underneath some of the cups, shuffle all of the cups around in circles, and then what you would want to do is make sure the dog is finding the right cup with the right treat. If they are just knocking over all the cups willy-nilly, that's not really the game. We want them to go after the, the ones with food only. As a pro tip, I do recommend that you get your dog to do some sort of other activity once they have found all of the the treats. If they have found all of them and they're still searching and they're still going a little bit neurotic hunting them down, that can be very frustrating for your dog. So you want to make sure that you are disengaging them, give them some other activity to fixate on. Um, that way they don't get too obsessed with finding the treats that aren't there. Now, as I mentioned before, this list is all about free games, but if you're interested in getting a new toy or a new food puzzle for your dog, I think those are excellent. Outward Hound has my favorite food puzzles. They've got a great library of different types and um, I'm not like an affiliate or sponsor of them or anything like that. I just think they have a really great library of different food puzzles. The one thing that I will tell people, <clears throat> a lot of times they get frustrated because they see that their dog doesn't engage with the food puzzle or doesn't get it. You do want to make sure that your dog has some form of success early on. In fact, you want your dog to be more um, successful than challenged. You want to make sure that they are engaged and that they feel they can do it. Um, giving them certain hints that will lead them in the right direction so that they're successful. Once they have the success under their belt, then they're going to be more motivated to work harder when more challenges arise. And that's really the idea is that you're not staying simple and easy forever. It's just when you do make it difficult, they need to have the motivation and the confidence to continue to search for it. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you hit like, consider subscribing. Let's go on to the next one. The other fun game that you can play with your dog is food tests. Now food tests do require a little bit more patience, a little bit more skill from your dog. So it is important that they understand how to wait patiently for you to put the treat out there in front of them and not take it without your go ahead. Uh, but food tests can be really exciting. Get them testing things that you have already in your kitchen. That could be broccoli or watermelon. Watermelon's really fun because I like watching the juice come out and in this video that I mentioned earlier there is a list of a bunch of foods that you can try this is also another way that we establish a dog's high medium or low value treats so this is a great way for you to figure out what your dog values and watch their expressions and I definitely recommend you video some of this and it's a great social media post I love watching it on Instagram now the next activity that I recommend you play with your dog is something I call creative cueing now creative cueing is something that you take a behavior you're your dog already knows. So your dog already knows sit, he already knows down, he already knows whatever, and you apply some sort of new cue to it. So for example, every time uh, your dog smells your lavender candle, you ask them to go to their bed and lay down in a stay. Or it could be that vanilla means they're supposed to sit. Or it could be that every time you ring a bell, you're asking them to recall to you. It could be that you change the cue for sit to you tilting your head. So every single time you tilt your head, your dog gives you a sit. When you are doing this, you want to add the new cue first and then ask for the second cue that they already know. Sit. Yes. This is just a fun way to give them a new cue for something that they already know. Um, but in the case of like the recall, it can be very handy to have a bell mean come. You do want to be careful about sensitivities towards dogs, making sure that they're not noise sensitive or whatever. Um, that's one of the reasons I like working with candles is just because the dog can still smell that scent and know, oh, okay, I, that candle came out, that lavender came out, I'm supposed to go lay on my bed. And one of the most infinitely fun games is something called 101 Things to Do with a Box. You could also use a cup or Tupperware, but this is a great game to get dogs to uh, put them, their selves in a box or knock over a box or scoot up in a box with their nose. Um, it's just literally 101 things that you could do to a box. 
Now, I do recommend you start off with something that your dog might already be accustomed to. Um, that's why when I offer the box, I usually will see what the dog will volunteer first, just naturally. You also want to be mindful about making sure they're not doing behaviors that are going to be undesirable later on. Um, if you have a retriever puppy who maybe doesn't have a whole lot of uh, self-awareness just yet, teaching him to chew on a box is probably not a good idea. But teaching him to knock it over with his paws instead of his mouth is getting him more familiar with his body awareness and showing him that he can have just as much fun with his paws instead of his face. Now, some things that I will tell you about 101 Things to Do with the Box is that it is a higher level learning, not just for the dog, but for the trainer as well, for the owner. Um, it does require that the owner has some good shaping skills. And if you don't know what I mean, I recommend you check out this video that I posted earlier, but I do suggest that you have a little bit more uh, skill, a little bit more awareness of what you're doing and that you do some research. Now, if you've watched the video this far, I wanted to thank you and give you a little present. So I have a little secret for you that people who have skipped the video are not going to know. So don't tell anyone in the comments below. This is just our little secret. But I have linked a bunch of how to in the description box below. So if you were looking for an in-depth article on how to teach 101 things to do with the box or how to play nose work, I have linked my favorite resources in the description box below. Check them out after this. In addition to some higher level learning like 101 things to do with the box, you can also teach your dog tricks. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why would I need my dog to spin? Why would I need my dog to roll over? Well, I would say, why not? teach the rollover? Why not teach the spin? Um, those are wonderful tools and honestly sometimes it's not fair to put a moving dog in a stationary position. So for example if there's some sort of excitability in a space and you ask for a sit stay that might not be a fair criteria but if you ask them to do a spin or a rollover which requires a little bit more movement they might be more obliging. So it is important that you have some tools in your toolbox for when you need them. And that's how I consider tricks. That's how I consider uh, fun games like spin and roll over and whatever. Now, I do recommend you shape these behaviors or use a hand target. If you don't already have a hand target, I recommend you check out this video. It'll teach your dog touch. That way you do not have to rely on a lure. So I would recommend that if you're using a lure, you use it as a hint and you fade out that lure as soon as possible. If you don't know what a lure is, that is where you put the treat up to the dog's nose and you pivot them in a circle um, to make the dog spin or whatever. Don't recommend you do that too much. I recommend you use a hand target instead. But anyway, YouTubing how-to videos on how to teach your dog to do a trick is so beneficial and it's free. You can just sit at home and mess around with your dog. Teach your dog to do a fun trick. If there's no harm in it, if anything, they're gonna enjoy it, they're gonna love it, they're gonna have a positive association with it. And one day it's gonna come into handy when the sit is failing and when the down is failing, but they will choose to do a rollover. Now this has just been a dabble of all of the games that you can play while you are in quarantine. I know that this is a very stressful time for the humans. It's a very stressful time for our pets. They're frenzied, they're chaotic. They don't understand why their routines have changed. I do wanna let you know that I am doing sp uh, special dog training quarantine lessons virtually online. So um, the all of the information is in the description box below, but if you are interested in doing a private lesson with me to teach your dog one of the games or many of the games that we have described here. I'm going to be doing that discounted quarantine training session uh, for games and tricks until whenever this virus goes away, whether that's two weeks from now or three years from now, this discounted special is going to be in play. So uh, if you're interested in doing a training session with me to teach one of these games, make sure you check that out in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like, consider subscribing if you're new here. If you are new here, you might wanna peruse some of my other videos. I've got a lot of videos on dog training and dog behavior, and I'll see you guys all soon. Stay safe.